All right, today we are going to be talking about GDP. Okay, yesterday when GDP result actually dropped, surprisingly, there wasn't really a lot of movement in the market. I was actually expecting a lot more movement in the market. Uh, this, you know, despite the fact that um, we actually saw pretty bad GDP numbers, but I'm also at the moment guessing that you know, uh, because it was the second read and people most likely think that this GDP number is not going to really affect the market as much. Maybe that's why I think uh, people weren't as, um, I think, panicky uh, per, per se about the market as it is. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys the video on CNBC, which I thought was actually quite interesting. Okay, can I kind of just going, going through all the data points with you guys as well. Our second look at fourth quarter GDP gets downgraded by two tenths of one percent <coughs> from 2.9 percent to 2.7. Yeah, so uh, we got a 2.9 down to a 2.7 uh, percent for the second read. Okay. Consumption gets hit hard from 2.1 percent all the way down to 1.4 percent. Yeah, so consumption went all the way from 2.1 percent down to 1.4 percent. Okay, so for example, like we have, we actually see uh, CPI. Okay, CPI is uh, consumer price index. So that's basically a um, a da data sheet for us to actually see how consumers are spending their money, how people are, uh, how consumer are, are actually spending money, what they are spending on, and how much they're actually spending it on. Okay, we also got a consumer report in general of a uh, consumer spending as it is, and spending is actually actually went up. Okay, but surprisingly for this GDP, it was revised downwards. We got from a 2.1 down to a 1.4%. Okay, so pretty surprising for us to actually see such a low um, consumer number. Okay, so nevertheless, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be affecting GDP numbers. Now the money ball numbers on the pricing index, 3.9%. This is hotter than our last look at 3.5, and I'm sure that that just popped interest rates. <coughs> so he's talking about consumer consumer uh, spending, uh, the core consumer spending, uh, actually going up from 3.5 auto, uh, 3.5, uh, no, 3.9. Drop step 0.5, and I'm sure hotter than our last pricing index. 3.9. Yeah, 3.9. This is how you know when we were expecting 3.5 and it went all the way to 3.9 for the uh, core that consuming. Just interest rates so. and drop stocks. But do keep in mind this price index was created in 1947. It hit 9% in Q2 of last year. Q2 of last year was 9%. So now here we Okay, yeah, but to be fair, he's actually talking about Q2 of last year. Okay, I, I think that's enough for, for the video. But yeah, basically, he's talking about last year, uh, Q2, uh, where basically the whole entire uh, year, Q2 was when people started to spend a lot of money. That's what That was when uh, stimulus money was uh, on it at its maximum level. I, I believe that was when uh, you had a lot of uh, money coming in from the government. That was uh, 2022 Q2. Well, it was actually Q1, and then it was reflected in Q2. So yeah, uh, effectively, that was kind of where you actually see a lot of silly money actually enter into the uh, entire system, which is why you start to see consumer spending just went all the way up. And of course, you, you see consumer spend all the, go all the way to 9%. Chances are you're going to see crazy inflation kind of slap in uh, uh, towards us as well. Uh, and this is where we are, we are kind of at, at, at the moment, okay? With these kind of uh, GDP numbers, we are kind of in between like a rock and a hard place because if we get a good gdp number for example um a high gdp number per se okay let's just say we actually go up four percent um quarter over quarter getting four percent will be good it means that we are actually uh, doing better than estimated but that will also give the federal reserve an implication that you know we are actually ready for higher combat with uh, interest rates, you know, and they can actually bring uh, interest rates upwards because they can put the, their next SEP to say that, oh, you know, uh, GDP changes are not going to be that, that affected. So we are expecting our federal funds rate to be at 6% or 7%, something like that. Okay. And then we are going to get screwed because if interest rate continues to go up, okay, we are going to be expecting an even more dire level of recession hitting. Okay, at this moment, honestly speaking, I believe that everyone already expect a recession. We're just expecting the recession. Everyone is kind of just betting on the fact that it's going to be a mild recession or an extended recession. <coughs> and of course, I, I'm pretty sure that no one really want the latter, but you know, it, it can very well happen. Okay, so I'll just be prepared for that. And of course, if we actually get a bad GDP number, for example, like what we're actually getting, let's just say we get even lower. Let's just say you get like a 1.5% um, quarter over quarter. 
Okay, not not very very good. And if that were to happen, okay, I'm not saying that it's going to be doomsday per se, because if that were to happen, then the next SCP, okay, which is just summary of economic projection for the Federal Reserve, they're not gonna be like, oh okay, you know what? Our FFR we're gonna bring in the seven percent. They are not gonna do that. Because chances are they're gonna be I think, okay, you know what? We have to lower uh, GDP uh, expectation for the next following quarters. They might see, oh, okay, maybe right now we're at one point five percent, and if that's the case, by maybe by twenty twenty four we might actually get back to a three percent uh, increase, or to, by twenty twenty five things of that nature. Okay, and if they want to actually do something along that line, FFR will most likely be going downwards, which is why, like I said, GDP numbers bad doesn't exactly means bad, good doesn't exactly means good. Okay, but at the same time. Bad doesn't mean it's good. Good doesn't mean it's bad. Okay, which is why this is not a 50-50 sort of market. We are not going to be suddenly just getting one result and thinking, oh, okay, we know how the market is going to move. That's not how it is at the moment. Okay, if you're looking at earnings result at the moment, you are, you are going to get confused as well. You're going to see a company have a triple beat on, <coughs> on top line, bottom line, things like that. And then outlook. Fail to to actually uh upkeep on the outlook on its own, they're gonna drop by five percent, drop by ten percent. Okay, they might actually fail on every estimate possible, and they might actually go up by twenty percent. There is so many different kind of things that can happen like this. If we look at for example for Meta. Okay, they they, they weren't actually actually doing very very well for the earnings results. Okay, but they actually announced a stock buyback, and that alone was enough for it to saw its share price up by twenty percent. Things can happen like that, okay. And we're not even talking about uh, about some penny stocks. We're talking about meta platforms. We're talking about Facebook here, okay. And and they just went out at twenty percent of their earnings, uh, which is kind of crazy, okay. Which is why I know that you know I, I talked about all this uh, sort of data set a lot, okay. I'm not saying that these are like critically important, but let's be honest here, okay. Uh, these are data that actually help us uh, see what what we can actually do with the information that we have on hand and how we actually play out with in our within our own portfolio and such but of course like i said before i do think that it's very important for you to actually keep cash on the side if you actually watch my previous video about my sofi video i actually sold a lot of my stocks uh on sofi okay i actually sold on other stocks but i'm most likely going to make a video about it i'll see how it actually goes but what i actually want to um emphasize in that video is actually just keeping your cash level relatively healthy because you definitely need to have a lot of cash uh, in this upcoming recession because either you want to buy another day or you might need a lot of cash in general for you to just continue in this hyperinflated economy where things are continuously going up in price so keeping cash level relatively high is always going to be good for you and of course you know if you cannot keep your cash level high at least just increase your money making skill you know your different high high earning um income skills and you know hopefully that, that is going to be able to help you tight through this sort of recession find skills that is able uh to you know help you tight through this sort of recession whatever it is you know you you either want to keep cash or you want to earn more money <laughs> whatever it is okay but you definitely definitely need to have more money on you okay because this recession Personally, I don't think it's going to be a mild recession. I don't think it's going to be like the 2020 March, April uh, kind of sudden uh, V-shaped recovery. I don't think that's, go that's going to be the case. I think uh, we are most likely going to be seeing an extended um, extended recovery that would most likely take a year, two years, or even three years for us to even reco recover, which is why I I'm, I'm not exactly uh, super duper bullish on the market at the moment. Uh, which is why I, I, I keep on telling you guys that like, you know, I'm not super duper bullish on, on the market uh, as compared to like maybe in 2021 where I was like super duper bullish. I just all in on it to, onto everything. Right now, I, I'm a little bit more cautious with my money. Uh, you know, like I said, just, just be a little bit more cautious uh, in this market. I don't think that everything is going to be 50-50. Everything's not going to be as, it, it, as what it seems. Uh, just be a little bit more cautious. Uh, yeah, by the way, uh, that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.